That breaking news alert is coming from Jacksonville Fire and Rescue. Right now we're waiting for the chief to update us on a house fire on the northwest side that put one firefighter in the hospital. You're looking at video of the scene. We are waiting on word. They did tell us that JFRD, uh, the first responder, is expected to recover. And now we're going to go to that briefing right now. There's the chief powers getting ready to speak. Yeah, we have chief powers with JFRD as well as Randy Wise, the fire union president. They're going to give us an update on, on what happened and how this firefighter is doing, chief. Good afternoon. Um, so y'all are aware that we had a, a incident at a structure fire on Restalon Drive this afternoon where we had a firefighter that was injured. Uh, upon their arrival, when Engine 36 arrived, they were informed that there was somebody still inside. And so they went in to attempt to make a rescue. And while they were attempting that rescue and to extinguish the fire, this firefighter sustained some burns. Um, first of all, let me put it out there. He's, he's, he's in a good place. He's, he's, he just needed to be transferred to Shans Gainesville to the burn unit for some burns that involved his wrist that were circumvential and that's involved some dexterity. And so the doctors felt like the best thing we could do is get him down there. So one of our units has transported him as we speak down to, uh, down to Gainesville so the burn doctors can take care of him, but his, him and his family are in good spirits and uh, he's expected to make a full recovery. So when you're saying what you're saying is you're worried about the mobility of the hand and it goes all the way around, right? Yeah, the burn, the burn goes all the way around. He's got some other burns, his ears, his neck, uh, shoulders are burned and he's got some first degree burns kind of on both arms. But uh, the, the burn that's concerning for the doctors is the one that goes around his wrist area. And this goes to show the dangers that the men and women of JFRD and other departments go through every day. That, that's correct. The men and women of this department are extraordinary in what they do. You know, they're willing to risk it all to save, you know, one of our citizens. Um, and it's just amazing to, you know, what they're willing to do and sacrifice their own bodies to make those rescues. So people are asking about the decision to go in. At the time that JFRD received that call and got there to the scene, did they think that there were people inside the house? We know that there weren't, but did they think that initially? So I, I think on the initial dispatch, we didn't have that information. But when the crew arrived on scene, there was a bystander telling them that there was some somebody inside. And immediately they went into action to get in there and find that person and try to give them the best chance of survival. Obviously, there wasn't anybody in there, but they did exactly what they're supposed to do and get in there and, and attempt to make a rescue. Chief, can you tell us exactly what the firefighter was doing in that moment at, at, that he sustained the burnt? Yeah, he was actually on the hose line and they found the seat of the fire in the back of the house. And um, when uh, when he started extinguishing the fires, when he when he sustained those those burns. And would the protective gear not I mean, was it did it slip on him or because it normally the wrist would be covered? So the wrist, the wrist area of our bunker gear is one of the thinnest areas, obviously for dexterity reasons. And um, a lot of times when, you know, obviously water gets on a fire, it turns to steam and that steam's able to get through the small porous areas of our bunker gear and, and cause those kind of burns. Uh, obviously we have the state investigating, looking at, you know, at what caused a fire and all that, but that's kind of preliminary what we think is it was steam burns. Randy Wise, president of the Jacksonville Association of Firefighters. Can you tell me about the union's involvement here to make sure that this firefighter and his family are cared for during this difficult time. Yeah, that's really our main focus is to make sure, obviously, that the firefighter's okay. Uh, you know, we responded, <clears throat> we responded to the um, a hospital, check on him. And uh, what we have, you know, firefighters have a network, really a nationwide network. So what we have is our Gainesville brothers and sisters in, um, that uh, work in Gainesville. They're going to meet the family there and, and, our, and our brother firefighter and uh, just, you know, uh, attend to any of their needs that they may have, making sure that they're taken care of. And, uh, you know, depending on the status, we may send some people down later. Uh, but again, when they when they roll up, some of our Gainesville brothers will be there waiting on them to take care of uh, whatever they need. Mm -hmm. And this could be a long term recovery. Unfortunately, uh, burns sometimes take a lot of time. Uh, absolutely. Yes, this could, uh, <clears throat> especially in where it is, uh, it could it could be a long term recovery. We, we still have uh, even from the ship fire, we still have uh, you know, members still working through some of those injuries. So, yeah, burns take a long time to heal. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and to get back to work, uh, they, they may look healed, but to be able to go back into a firefighting mode may take a little bit longer. So, yeah, it could be could be a long time before he gets back to work. Chief, can you tell us a little bit about the firefighter himself, maybe age or how long he's been with the department? 
I'll just say he's been on the department a couple of years, um, and one of our, you know, one of our, as all of our firefighters are, you know, they just they're all willing to put it on the line, and that, it makes me extremely proud. I hate to see one of them get hurt, but it makes me extremely proud that they're willing to do whatever it's got to do to make a rescue like this, um, and and save and you know save somebody that they don't even know, but they but they do this throughout the city every day. We just are fortunate that we don't have a lot of injuries like this that we have to. All right, you, you were listening to the fire and chief and the union but president they, they, talking about a firefighter they, they, they transferred to Shane Gainville with Gainesville with burns on his wrist. He is expected to make a full recovery and he's in good condition. They thought at first there might have been a person inside that burning home. There wasn't anyone inside. The good news there and we do understand the Red Cross has been called in to help the people who do live in that home now that it's been damaged by fire. You can find all the very latest on this story and we continue to update this story for you as well on newsforjax.com.